Hello and welcome to my first impressions of Chivalry of a Failed Knight. When I first read the synopsis, it sounded pretty interesting. However, when I started to watch the show, it reminded me a lot of the Asterisk War, which I absolutely hated. So hopefully this anime will fare a little bit better than that. The story centers around the Seven Star Sword Art Festival, which is a tournament for magic users known as Blazers. Iki Kuragane is a student at one of the mage academies that are competing in this festival. However, he is often looked down upon because he is an F-ranked blazer and this means that his magical abilities are very low. Despite this, Iki enters the tournament with the goal of being recognized as the strongest magical knight in Japan. Funnily enough, this show starts off the exact same way the Asterisk War did. Our main character walks in on a girl named Stella who's in her underwear. Now this scene is cliche as hell, it's been done so many times before and it usually ends with the girl getting really mad and beating up the guy. And while that does happen here, the way it happens is amazing. Instead of getting all bashful and trying to look away, Iki faces the situation head on and attempts to repent by taking his own clothes off and showing himself in his underwear to the girl. This is how you do a cliche right. You use the audience's expectations against them by giving them something completely different. And with this scene, the show won me over very quickly. When talking about Iki, I found him to be very likeable. He's cool, calm, and surprisingly good in social situations. For example, there's this one scene where Stella is yelling at him for walking in on her and she says, how could you stare at me like that? How could you leer at me so disgustingly? And he responds with, because you were just so beautiful, I couldn't take my eyes off you. And with this line, he perfectly dodges a potential disaster. This line also shows that he's brutally honest, which makes him very easy to get behind. Moving on to Stella, who at first comes off as your typical Sundere, who has everything handed to her because she's from a rich family. About halfway through the first episode, I was talking to myself and I said, okay, if they're going to go this route, this generic as hell route with this character, they're going to have to give me some reason to care. And they totally ended up doing this. It turns out that Stella is the princess of a very small country and she's been training herself to the point of exhaustion ever since she was a kid. She's done this so that she can become a powerful magical knight and protect her people. And this is all you need to make a good character. With this one little bit of backstory, Stella goes from being this one note archetype to being a character with depth, actual depth. This further makes me look down on the Asterisk War, which I feel didn't even try to give their characters any depth. I'll also say that her crush on Iki is absolutely adorable. In every scene where she got bashful, I always found myself smiling. At this point, the cast was shaping up to be fantastic. There were a ton of interesting characters, including one transgender character known as Alice. She's very likeable as well, and it's great to see transgender people getting some representation in anime. But then, uh, they had to chuck incest in there. God damn it, show you were doing so well! Shizuku is Iki's full-blooded younger sister, and she has an obsessive crush on her older brother. Now, I will say that I'm not totally against incest in anime. I actually quite liked Koikaze. However, it's a very sensitive topic, so you have to use it cautiously. But here they just end up crowbarring it in like it's no big deal. It's executed so poorly and it really took away from my enjoyment of the show. The final thing I'll mention is that there's quite a bit of fan service here. Now most of the fan service is cleavage shots, skimpy outfits, you know, the kind of stuff you come to expect. However, there's one scene where they use the fan service to inspire feelings of dread. It was a great scene and I loved how fan service was being used as something more than just eye candy. So overall this has to be the biggest surprise of the season so far and I highly recommend it. If you would like to watch this show as well, it's available for legal streaming over on Hulu and Anime Lab. So anyway, thank you very much to everybody who watched this video. 
If you have any feedback, feel free to leave a comment. And if you like this video and want to see more, feel free to subscribe as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.